Good afternoon, welcome to Loriston Airport. Uh, we are in the mighty Cessna 152 for today's flight. Um, this is going to be another interesting one, actually in a couple ways. Um, first of all, let me get myself organized here. And uh, once again, we are back in the mighty Cessna 152. Um, but the, uh, the first way this flight is a little interesting is that, um, the wind is 180 degrees from what it normally is in the Caribbean today. So we're going to be using different runways than we usually use, which actually almost, uh, made me feel like doing something completely different for this flight. Just because it would be interesting to fly into and out of airports that you usually fly into in one, one uh direction and do it in, in a different like for example landing the opposite way at st martin would be kind of interesting but anyway uh rotating beacon on mixture is rich carpy is cold master and battery switches on uh throttle open a quarter inch let's Engage the starter. Magneto's back to both. Let's check the oil pressure. Oil pressure looks good. The RPMs are pretty good. Let's lean the mixture here a little bit for taxi. Let's turn the rest of our lights on, including our taxi light. Um, let's see what our uh, da, 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 da. Let's see what our altimeter setting is. No weather here. We got 1011 locally. So let's dial this down a little bit. Got 1011 down in Grenada, which is down south of here. Now, this is Loriston, Karasu Island. Please forgive me if I'm saying that incorrectly. Karaku, Karasu. Uh, again, forgive me. If I am butchering the name of your beautiful island, I think this is a really cool island. I think this is a really cool airport. Let's engage the brakes. Let's release the parking brake. Uh, are we on 122.8? We are not. And let's switch over. I just want to make sure here that my microphone is working. Uh, and it is... Sometimes it doesn't. I have to do kind of a specific thing to get it to to work, and sometimes I don't achieve that before flight, and then I wind up recording a flight that I can't post because um, because uh, there's no sound. Uh, this is the little airport. This is a design an airport somebody put on flightsim.to I would give you a quick tour of it but I want to go do this flight I will do a tour of this airport at some point I think it's really cool um, and uh, anyway it's freeware like I said um, Loriston traffic Cessna 4753 x-ray taxiing to runway uh, let's see one check the runway uh, Two eight. That was the worst radio call in human history, right there. Uh, because I clearly have no idea which runway I'm going to. Runway two seven. Okay. So wind is coming. Even though the wind sock is pointing that way. So what is my weather telling me here? My weather at Maurice Bishop International. Okay, so never mind. Alright. Some taxi to runway zero nine or how about that? So there goes my entire theory. Uh Microsoft's flight simulators um weather is wrong. Um well the flight planning page anyway. Um, Loris in traffic, Cessna 4753 X-ray, back taxi, runway 09 for departure, uh, Loriston. Uh, when I went 
to set up the flight and I'm going to turn on my landing light, turn off my taxi light. The, uh, the map page in Flight Simulator said the wind was out of the west. It's not, it's out of the east like it usually is. Alright, um, pull the power back here. And I've got my um, landing light on because I want to be visible on the runway. I should be on the center line of the runway. I am not because I am executing this back taxi pretty poorly. And too quickly. So we just want to make sure that we don't see any traffic coming in. I don't see anything. There's nothing on the iPad. Alright, let's come around. Let's get ourselves on center line. Heading indicator checks with the runway number. Mixture is rich. Car heat is cold. Um, trim is set for takeoff. Lorison traffic. Cessna 4753X ray. Taking off runway 09. It'll be a left turnout. It's Lorison. Um, all right, takeoff power is coming in. Takeoff power is set. Engine instruments are both in the green. Airspeed is alive. 60 knots, 65, and rotate. Say goodbye to that cool little airport. And although my destination is to the left, or to the right rather, I'm going to make a left turn out because I don't want to turn into those hills there. I always love the water flying out of this airport, it always looks so cool. Lauriston traffic, Cessna 4753 x-rays on a left crosswind departure off runway Niner. Uh, we're going to be making a left downwind departure in Lauriston. And if you got all that, congratulations, because you and I didn't get all that, what I just said. Alright, so. This is once again not the most beautiful departure in the world. On my, on my behalf. That's what I mean. Not that it isn't a beautiful departure. It's a gorgeous departure. Look at this. I mean, look at this. How cool. I mean, this is... <laughs> it's, it's pretty mind-boggling, really, what we get in Flight Simulator. It really is. So, Lorriston traffic, that's the 4753 X ray. I'm crossing the inbound uh, to runway 09, climbing through 1,300 feet, departing southbound, uh, Lorriston. So, I would be above any traffic that would be coming in right now, but I really shouldn't be here. Really not the ideal place to be. So I told you there was one cool thing we were doing and we didn't do it because I was wrong. So what is the other cool thing? The other cool thing is we are continuing our search for lost Caribbean airports today. And the airport we're looking for today is called Pearls Airport, and that was on the East Coast, and why am I continually yawing here to the right, We and, and uh, Pearls Airport was on the East Coast of uh, Grenada, and I am somewhat embarrassed to say that 
uh, the United States Marine Corps um, took over this airport when we invaded Grenada. I don't know, I frankly don't remember why we invaded Grenada. I was eight years old. Uh, I think we have <laughs> I think we've since mended relations, I'm not quite sure. Um, for those of you who don't find that funny, I, I don't find uh, invading anybody's country funny. Um, especially in this day and age with what's going on in uh, in Ukraine. Uh, I'm sort of laughing at my own ignorance. Because uh, I, I consider myself pretty well versed um, there is no fuel pump to turn off I'm not really paying attention to what I'm doing if you haven't noticed I'm sort of too mesmerized by how beautiful the, the scenery is uh, but I'm, I'm mainly laughing at my own ignorance as to the fact that I don't know why we invaded Grenada um and I certainly hope that uh, that the beautiful people of Grenada have been restored. Everything that was that was done unto them in that invasion. Actually, this you know now that I think about it. So Pearl's Airport. One of the things about Pearl's Airport is that it has. Uh, let me check the power here. power back. Uh, it has on the field to this day from what I understand uh, the remnants of some Soviet era aircraft um, which maybe uh, may, may offer a clue as to why the United States invaded Grenada Look at this scenery. I mean, it's just stunning. The, this is stock scenery in a flight simulator. It's... It really is just... beautiful. Um, so that may be why... Um, and you can tell there's a wind. See how we're getting... We're kind of... They call it crabbing. Pilots call it crabbing. When your your nose is pointed this way and you're kind of still going that way. It's like how crabs walk. Um, but anyway, um, that might offer a clue as to why uh, the invasion happened. I believe it was in 1983. Um, and um, it seems from looking at it on uh, Google Maps it seems somewhat intact I mean unlike uh, unlike Bramble Airport that we tried to find the other day uh, it seems like it's actually somewhat intact. It looks like there was maybe some runway damage. Um, but I mean, it looks like there's some runway damage. It also looks like there's still a fair amount of runway that's still there. And it looks like what would be two relatively large, um, likely Soviet, those Soviet aircraft. Um, so we're going to go see... if we can find this airport 
Um, power back here just a little bit. Bring it back 100 RPM. That'll help us. So. So Pearl's, I'm, I'm reading now from Wikipedia, this is kind of interesting. Pearls was used by the Allies for military aircraft during World War II. And it seems like there were a lot of uh, World War II airfields in the Caribbean, which I find really, really interesting. Um, I would really like to know more about... This is obviously the island of Grenada here that we're coming down to. Um, on October 25th, 1983, Marines from the 8th Marine Regiment landed nearby by helicopter and captured Pearls Airport during the United States invasion of Grenada. Uh, the United States invasion of Grenada, October 1983. You can see we're get. You can, can you see the wind that we're getting from the left? And it's just kind of blowing us slowly over to the right. Um, uh, let's see. Um, Maurice Bishop. So. I actually I should I should just let that be um, because the United States launched a military intervention following a an appeal for help from the Organization of Eastern Caribbean States. Um, one thing I really don't want to get into on this channel and I certainly don't want to um, I'm sure there are people that were affected by this that are still affected by this maybe lost loved ones um, and have you know justifiably strong feelings about what happened and I don't want to make light of anything um, so I will leave it at that I'm just kind of interested in the history of uh, of the island and the airport and uh, like I said there's a, there's quite a few I think if you see that rock kind of right there at about my right right where I'm looking right in line with the with that outcropping there I believe that is Pearl Rock or Pearl's Rock, which is off the end of the runway. Um, so I'm kind of curious about the history of the military airfields in the Caribbean during the World War II era and I'd love it if anybody who knows anything about it or maybe knows of some good books to read um, could could comment in the in the comment section I always I'm always looking to learn more about the Eastern Caribbean um, and the different islands And uh, one of the things, let me look here real quick. Winds are, yeah, I mean, the wind is, eh, it's 13 knots. So the wind is 0, 090 0 at 13 knots. So it's coming like, coming like this at 13 knots. So it's 
it's definitely pushing us a little bit. So I think right there in front of us, you can see that line starting to form. For Pearls Airport, we're going to get some mechanical turbulence off these hills here. And I'll be, look at that, you can definitely see it. Let's uh, matric matriculate over to the right here a little bit. Get a, hopefully a good view. Look at that. And I didn't add this. Uh, there is on flightsim.to, there is an add on scenery that you can get. Look at that. That will recreate this airport, put it back, you know. Um, but And I have it, but I have not loaded it for this flight. So this is what. Microsoft Flight Simulator gives us as the standard scenery, but this is clearly the old airport, and uh, it's really neat. So, I vote we land there. What do you think? Um. So, if we want to land there, given the wind is 11016 knots, we are going to have to make kind of an interesting approach here. So, but it, it's good because it'll give us a chance to have a look again at the airport a little bit and this is what's so amazing about Microsoft Flight Simulator is you even get like the proper like you get these Caribbean colors you know for the for the for the houses the buildings and the houses are appropriate for the area like the vegetation it's just really cool and if I had to guess, looking at the scenery here, let's, let's, let's have a look this way. If I had to guess, I would say there might be a right-hand traffic pattern to this airport to keep you out of the hills, but I would be really interested to know if anybody remembers what the... Uh, what the approach pattern was into into this airport if you do if you have some local knowledge I'd love to hear it so let's put on well I'm not going to put on the car heat yet I'm not going to put on the car heat quite yet And the only reason I think there might be a right-hand pattern is because you see to the left here is lower terrain, and to the right here there's some higher terrain. So I kind of feel like coming in here on the left side, the runway on your right perhaps be a bit safer, but we shall see. I will right, we'll go carpet on. That's going to reduce the power a little bit. I'm going to bring the power back to 2000. And you want to talk about making up your own approach to an airport. So I just kind of wonder if that right side doesn't make a little more sense, we'll see here. But 
no reason to make traffic calls because there shouldn't be any traffic. I will right, we'll go first notch of flaps here. Don't know what the runway number is, but we're somewhat close to this, right? Uh, it's gonna be a short approach. It's gonna be a Zarnell Hughes special right here. My friend Zarnell is a master at this sort of approach. And could undoubtedly do this with his eyes closed. All right, flaps are set. Car Carp he is on. That glare is not helping. now and just use the nose to manage the speed okay that's about a runway one zero huh bit of a right crosswind for sure a little bit we'll put the carb heat in flaps are coming up and let's uh, let's see here so this is <laughs> it's an airport that technically doesn't exist anymore So, oh, what is this? It certainly looks like a, f is it like a fuel pump. What does that look like? It certainly does, doesn't it? Yeah, that's Jet A. <laughs> um, okay. Let's just stop here for a second. We'll put on the parking brake. Other fuel fuels fine. Mixture is lean. Carb heat is cold. So, um, I do believe that in real life there are some remnants of Soviet aircraft right there. I'm curious now. I did not. No, see, there's Pearl's Airport, which I can select for Microsoft Flight Simulator, but I clearly have not selected it. So this is the stock scenery. And for whatever reason, Microsoft Flight Simulator has a fuel service here at this airport which is no longer an airport so hmm interesting definitely kind of cool to see though right all right so now what we're gonna do is release the parking brake let's head this way 
Um, so this is our first found Caribbean airport. First found lost Caribbean airport, I guess I should say. So that everybody now knows you can fly into this airport without needing any sort of like add-on scenery or anything. I mean, it's 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 here. It's a pretty wide runway too. Whoops. Apparently not that wide if I'm about to taxi off the side of it here. I'm just kind of curious to see what uh, what's around here. That must be an old taxiway there, it looks like. Over there to the left, must be an old taxiway. Sort of looks it, right? It's really kind of curious to what's around here. Got a house there with some some satellite action going on. Alright, car peat's cold. Mixture is in my right hand. And mixture is rich. Car peat is cold. Trim is well actually like a little bit like that for takeoff all right takeoff power is coming in takeoff power is set engine instruments are in the green airspeed is alive 60 65 and rotate Positive rate, tap the brakes, gear ain't going nowhere. Gear ain't going nowhere. Alright, so. There, ladies and gentlemen, is our first found Caribbean airport. Kind of neat, huh? I think so. Alright, let's check the weather here. At Maurice Bishop International Airport, we've got runway 1-1 is still the altimeter, yeah? I think we can stay at 1500, what do you think? You know, and there's one theory of 
flying, which I kind of like actually, is to be a little bit more kind of by sight and sound. And when you reduce your power after takeoff, well, to level off, like I just did, instead of really just focusing on, you know, I always look over. And, you know, set it to a specific uh, number. But one theory that I kind of like is to do it by ear and just pull back until you hear the power come back. You know, until you hear kind of the first real reduction. And you're going to hear an initial reduction, but in a constant speed propeller like this, what you're also what's also going to happen is once you level off, the RPMs are going to go up. Don't ask me to explain it. Not, I barely know the difference between a hammer and a screwdriver, you know, honestly. But, um, let's see, elevation is 45 feet. I don't want to climb anymore. Oh, that's right. I overflew the field. I did this one time. But that was from the other side. Uh, let's see if we've got any air traffic control service we do not but see what I mean like this is just standard scenery for Microsoft Flight Simulator I just I think the colors are so rich and vibrant like the Caribbean is and uh, I mean you see the water look at the water even the way it moves. You know, it's just, it's so beautiful. And for somebody, you know, I I always wanted to fly around the Caribbean. And, like, the, the flight simulator I used to use was prepared. But I never did, because there was no point. There was no, there were, you know, the islands were all just blobs. There were no... Uh, let me make a radio call here real quick. Um... Maurice Bishop traffic, uh, Cessna 4753 X-ray is 9 miles to the north. Uh, we'll make a left downwind for runway 10, Maurice Bishop. Um, I mean, look at that. Look at the water. Look at how it moves. And it's not just one color. Like, you've got the, you know, just amazing. And... You know, there were there was a program in prepared where you could Oh, I'm about to sneeze. Okay. Uh, let me pay attention here. Um, there was a program in Prepared which corrected the outlines of the islands so it made like the, their footprint correct and like that was the most exciting thing you could get really for the Caribbean in, uh, in Prepared which tells you how pathetic it was I mean you know and there were a couple airports like Barbados and Antigua and of course St. Martin St. Bart's but I mean forget you know any of the Grenadines Islands like um, you know Lauriston Airport that I just took off from or Union Island or you know 
St. Lucia or Dom Dominica, Stacia, any of these airports, forget it. There's no chance. You know, they're just not there. And in Microsoft Flight Simulator, not only do we have this awesome stock scenery like this, you know, just the regular... This is, this is, there's nothing added to this. This is just Microsoft Flight Simulator. Um, but in addition to all this, we also have um, all the islands that the people, that, you know, people, uh, the islands, all the airports and sceneries and things that people make. Um, it's just amazing. I mean, basically, every island from uh, Aruba to St. Martin, San Juan, the DR, out to Jamaica, like basically every airport in the Caribbean is covered. Every single one. Um, which really makes this like a place you can actually come and fly. You know, and look around and explore and see things. And it's just, it's amazing. To me, anyway. You know, I understand most people are doing other things in Microsoft Flight Simulator, but I couldn't be happier. All right, we're going to put on the carb heat. It's going to be our first power reduction here. Carb heat is always your first power reduction in the Cessna 152. Maurice Bishop traffic, Cessna 4753 X rays on the left downwind runway 10, Maurice Bishop. And, uh, I mean, it's just so cool. This airport I purchased. This is Grenada, uh, Maurice Bishop International. And this one I purchased along with, uh, I believe it, com it comes in, I know it comes in a package, but it comes in a package with, um, with, Trinidad and Tobago airports. And it's it's not that much money to get all three airports and I highly recommend it. So I'm gonna bring the power back to two thousand. And I'm gonna maintain my altitude. What that's gonna do is bleed off some speed. I'll be able to add a notch of flaps. And we're going to go power to 1700, second notch of flaps. Maurice Bishop traffic, Cessna 4753 X ray, left base runway 10. Uh, Maurice Bishop. And we'll go back power to 1500. I'm going to do another short approach here. I, don't, I usually don't do these, and, and I should. There's no reason to make airliner approaches in a Cessna 152. And it takes a little bit more. Uh, let's check real quick, make sure we don't see anything on final. Takes a little bit more airmanship. You always want to clear your throttle once before. Uh, when you make a big reduction like that, you know, down to 1500 RPM, you want to you want to clear your throttle. And what I mean by that is you just give it a shot of throttle. Short final runway one zero. Uh, and that makes sure there's no carbides developing. Uh, Maurice Bishop traffic, Cessna 4753 X ray, short final runway 10, uh, Maurice Bishop. And. 65 knots. I'm going to aim for the last dots there, those four. Those are 500 foot markers. This right here, that double marker, is a thousand feet past the touchdown zone. So this is 1,500 feet past the touchdown zone. And that right there is 2,000 feet past the touchdown zone, and that's what I'm aiming for. Whoopsie daisy. Um, yeah. 
<laughs> it doesn't look so bad in Flight Simulator, but I guarantee you if I did that in real life, we'd be like revisiting our lunch. Sometimes I'm so interested in lean the mixture, carb heat, and you, I always say you don't want to do anything in terms of reconfiguring the airplane until you're off the runway. The only exception to that is putting the carb heat in. Because with the carb heat open, uh, what you have is unfiltered air from the unfiltered air getting into the engine. And when I say unfiltered, I mean unfiltered. And you could be getting rocks, dirt, dust, you know, all kinds of junk. All right, so let's come to a stop here. Lean the mixture. Carp heat is in. Flaps are up. If I was using my jump charts, I would know where to go. I want to go over this way. It just looks a little more interesting to me. And what we're going to do, I'm going to pull up over here and park. Then we're going to go take a little tour of Maurice Bishop International Airport. Um, you know what? This is a simulator. There's nobody around to yell at me, right? Alright, perfect. So what we're going to do, gonna come over here. And let's come to a stop. Perfect. Mixture to idle. Cut off. Throttle is idle. Engine stopped. Parking brake on. Magnetos off. Master. Well, let's go lights off first. Master and battery switches off. All right. Now let's come out here. And let's take a quick look here. Let's take a quick look through camera, camera drone. Oh, yes, I have forgotten one thing. Hopefully this is going to work. Huh? No, you see, I want to do the camera. Cool. Now, let's go check out the airport here. So, yeah, I always do that. I hit the wrong thing. Is that a way in? That is a way in. Let's go in. I want to go in. You want to go in? All right, I'm going to make you guys sick. If I keep doing this. But apparently there's nowhere to go anyway, so. So this is Maurice Bishop International Airport. Welcome to Grenada. It's not... Nothing spectacular, but uh, then again, I mean, the airport may be real basic. You know, I don't know. Um, I like having custom airports. You know, I think they're pretty cool. And I think I paid maybe 15 bucks for all three of these airports. Uh, Trinidad, uh, Trinidad and Tobago and this one. So I'm not going to 
I'm not going to be critical of this. I've flown in here a couple times. And let's see if... Let's go right through the wall here. See what we get. Alright, seems like... Seems like there isn't a whole lot in here, which is fine. You know, I mean, for, uh, I, you know, for what I paid, uh, three airports for 15 bucks, and you get an accurate representation of the runway and the taxiways and, you know, the, uh, the layout. Uh, I am not going to complain. In fact, I would recommend to you to go buy. Uh, oh, look at that. Hey. I would recommend to you to go buy, uh, this package for, uh, Grenada, um, Grenada, Trinidad and Tobago, all three airports together. The other two are really, are, are really neat too. I've flown into Trinidad a whole bunch of times in, uh, made a whole bunch of videos, so. You can definitely go see that. Um, as you can see, this is my new toy. This uh, this drone camera controller. So I want to start doing a little bit more of this, showing showing a little bit about the airports where where we land. Mostly the freeware airports because uh, I think those are really pretty neat. But uh, anyway, um, we did find the lost airport of Pearl's Airport on Grenada and I think that was pretty cool hope you guys enjoyed the video I think we're still a little turned a little sideways here looks like yeah it kind of ruined my, I was going to do a cool fade out thing but that kind of ruined it so Anyway, I hope you guys are doing well. Um, say hello in the comments and uh, take it easy. From Grenada, signing off.